China's acquisition of the Hulk for a cool 30 million US dollars revealed an unexpected windfall, two treasures tucked away within its steel confines. The revelation stirred a sense of regret in the United States and Australia. Dive into the details with us in this video. In the early days, China faced the harsh realities of discrimination and technological roadblocks imposed by Western nations. To elevate China's manufacturing and weapons capabilities, the country set its sights on an abandoned aircraft carrier from Australia. Australia welcomed the news with open arms, seeing this deal as an opportunity too good to pass up. Back then, alliances were sought after, and Australia was keen on offloading the aircraft carrier, a hot potato no other nation was willing to touch. Seizing the moment, China boldly declared its readiness to accept the carrier and even put a substantial offer on the table. A hefty $30 million. Australia, recognizing the rarity of such a chance, swiftly inked the contract, making it clear that the transaction was non-refundable and non-negotiable. What prompted Australia's jubilation at parting with an aircraft carrier for 30 million US dollars? Why was China eager to invest such a significant sum in an aircraft carrier that no other nation wanted? And, in the end, does Australia truly harbor no regrets? Our focus today is on the Hamas Melbourne, the abandoned aircraft carrier China acquired from Australia in 1984 for a sum that raised eyebrows, 30 million US dollars. Originally acquired from England at a friendly price, Australia's journey with the HMAS Melbourne began during a pivotal moment in naval history. The dominance of the US aircraft carrier fleet in the Pacific during World War II highlighted the transformative power of carriers over battleships with their imposing ship cannons. In response, the Armstrong shipyard embarked on a swift construction process, completing the aircraft carrier in a mere two years by February 1945. Unfortunately, the urgent production did not align with the timeline of World War II, rendering the carrier surplus to immediate wartime needs. Seizing an economic opportunity during a downturn, post-war Britain found itself with an idle aircraft carrier. Faced with the challenge of finding a suitable buyer, deliberation led to the decision to sell it to Australia. The rationale behind this choice was twofold. Australia's status as a Commonwealth nation, independent from the UK, and the strength of the Australian Navy, which ranked only below the military might of the UK and the US during that era. Motivated by political considerations and a desire to prevent Australia from aligning too closely with the US military, Britain agreed to sell the carrier to Australia for a mere 10 pounds. However, this bargain came with the condition that Australia would exclusively purchase British equipment. In 1949, Australia officially acquired the aircraft carrier, renaming it the Melbourne. The Australian Navy, optimistic about the carrier's potential, believed that the HMAS Melbourne would significantly enhance their coastal defense capabilities. Little did they know that decades later, this very carrier would become the center of attention, changing hands once more, this time to China for a hefty 30 million US dollars. Equipped with state-of-the-art weapons and gear, the Melbourne was poised to be the pride of the Australian Navy. However, the future proved far from secure, marked by a series of disastrous events. On October 28, 1957, a nerve-wracking incident unfolded as the Melbourne had a close encounter with the battleship Lanka in its own port. The collision sent shockwaves through the Australian Navy, prompting an immediate and thorough inspection of the Melbourne. Fortunately, the slow pace of the collision in the port averted any damage, Yet this mischief-laden chapter for the Melbourne had only just commenced. On February 10, 1964, tragedy struck again as the Melbourne collided with its own destroyer, splitting it in half and claiming the lives of all on board. The Melbourne itself suffered significant damage. This calamity warranted a thorough investigation by higher authorities. The inquiry revealed that the destroyer's captain, in a misguided maneuver, had directed the vessel off course, 
resulting in the collision. After a two-year hiatus in 1969, the Melbourne faced yet another challenge. Planned joint military exercises between Australia and the United States turned tragic when the Melbourne, fixated on the American Evans, collided without hesitation, cleaving the Evans into two halves. The instantaneous sinking of the Evans claimed the lives of 73 sailors. Americans, sensing an ominous pattern, abruptly cancelled all joint military exercises involving the Melbourne. As the Melbourne returned to its home port, it seemed discontent with the previous collisions, engaging in successive collisions with several other ships. The dark specter surrounding the Melbourne had not gone unnoticed by the vigilant American forces. Miraculously, the series of collisions that plagued the Melbourne were, for the most part, devoid of major incidents. However, on September 3, 1970, while still harbored in Sydney, the Melbourne managed to collide with a ferry. The world soon caught wind of the quirky aircraft carrier in Australia with a penchant for mishaps, earning the Melbourne a reputation as a bumper ship. Not content with causing calamities for other vessels, the Melbourne turned on itself. On October 15, 1972, the aircraft carrier experienced spontaneous combustion, billowing smoke into the air. Though the blaze was fortunately extinguished in time, the Australian Navy's disdain for the Melbourne grew. Yet, the Melbourne seemed unwilling to let the Navy off the hook. Just two years after the fiery episode, another collision unfolded. On July 11, 1974, as the Melbourne navigated Sydney Harbour, it abruptly collided with a passenger ship, carrying the potential for a large loss of life given the presence of passengers on board. The incident shook Australia to its core, eroding the government's confidence in the Melbourne. Comparing the Melbourne's track record to other aircraft carriers worldwide, it became clear that its mishaps far exceeded the norm. From its arrival in Australia in 1956 until 1979, the Melbourne failed to fulfill its duties, causing considerable trouble and turning Australia into the subject of global mockery. After enduring these trials, the Australian military, in 1982, officially announced the retirement of the Melbourne, bringing an end to its legendary service career. Despite the aircraft carrier's notorious reputation, the Australian government, hoping to recoup some funds, decided to put the Melbourne up for sale. Naturally, in light of its tumultuous history, potential buyers were scarce. Nevertheless, China surprisingly emerged as an interested party showcasing a strong desire to acquire the Melbourne. Following the news release, the Australian military stripped the aircraft carrier of all its weapons and equipment. Despite the Melbourne's less than illustrious legacy, China, against the odds, saw value in this notorious vessel. China's decision to acquire the Melbourne was anything but capricious. It was a calculated move that left not only Western nations but also many within the country bewildered. Despite lacking equipment, the Melbourne, purchased for a hefty $30 million, presented China with a unique opportunity to understand the intricacies of aircraft carrier structure and design. Upon the Melbourne's arrival in China, swift dismantling commenced. To everyone's surprise, the aircraft carrier still housed the invaluable steam catapult and arresting cable equipment. This discovery was a veritable treasure trove for China, considering that the steam catapult was the primary aircraft catapult post-World War II, only supplanted by electromagnetic catapults on the American Ford-class carriers. Even Australia, in its pursuit of advanced technology, had to turn to the United States for steam catapult installations. The presence of this finished product was a significant gain for China, lacking relevant technology in this domain. The steam catapult's importance cannot be overstated, as it remained the standard until the advent of the Ford-class carriers. Equally noteworthy was the arresting cable equipment, often overlooked but crucial for carrier operations. Historically, foreign technology had blocked arresting cable production, and China, lacking the requisite knowledge, invested considerable time and effort in its research and development. The arresting cable was indispensable for the safe landing of fighter jets on the carrier, and its advanced technology posed a formidable challenge to overcome. 
The unexpected discovery of these two invaluable devices marked a substantial and unexpected leap forward for China in carrier technology, presenting a serendipitous windfall from the acquisition of the Melbourne. It was only at this juncture that the United States realized Australia, perhaps in a hasty oversight, had left behind these crucial components. This misstep became apparent when China, in its later acquisition of the Variag from Ukraine, prompted the United States to insist that Ukraine remove all equipment before selling it. The Melbourne's value to China extended beyond the steam catapult and arresting cable equipment. It became a valuable educational tool for Chinese engineers, offering an in-depth understanding of aircraft carrier construction. Through meticulous study of the Melbourne, China laid an indispensable foundation for the subsequent modification of the Varyag and the construction of the Shandong. Reflecting on the $30 million spent, one can argue that the Melbourne's contribution to China far exceeded its monetary value. The acquisition not only provided critical technological assets, but also empowered Chinese engineers with the knowledge essential for advancing their own aircraft carrier projects. Thank you for watching. If you found this content engaging, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Until next time.